Hey, what is up guys? So today we are going to be talking about the Necros. A lot of you guys have been asking me, can I still build this deck? Is this a good deck to make? Is this deck going to be still competitive? And honestly, right now, I think it's okay right now. Uh, just because we don't have Bosch, the Breakers of Shadows, that's going to completely change up the game. Once the Magician Pendulum deck comes out, everything is almost going to be irrelevant. Unless Cosmos gets some crazy, crazy support. So, uh, I'm going to show you guys like how the deck can play using uh, a new card that everyone's been using in like almost everything. It's called Brilliant Fusion. It's just it's a way to send the clown to the graveyard and get a lot of free advantage. The extra summons that you get in the deck are super good. And we will also be going over a YCS deck profile that was used last format. It actually got top 8. It was actually one of the last Necros decks that was actually in um, the competitive scene uh, in the uh, last YCS that we had, which was at San Jose. And the uh, next YCS uh, is actually going to be cancelled uh, due to the uh, attacks. They decided to cancel the YCS, but nonetheless, uh, let's check out what the Necros can do with uh, Brilliant Fusion. because. Uh, this card gives you that additional summon, and when you can go summon Manju, summon Senju, not only can you make something, but you can see like how you can still relatively be, you know, effective in this format. If you have Brilliant Fusion and you happen to have like a Manju, and that additional summon that you get off of uh, Brilliant Fusion, plus the ability to send a clown to the graveyard, plus you know, if you happen to draw like the awful cards during your main phase, you can tribute up to two monsters from your hand or your side of the field, and if you do draw the same number of cards you tributed. So that can work with Clown, that can work with a Gemini card that you actually don't want to draw. So now that you can kind of see how the deck can play and how good Brilliant Fusion is in the deck, let's go ahead and look at a uh, YCS top winning deck, and then we'll kind of talk a little bit more about uh, what Necros can do in the upcoming uh, formats, as well as uh, just the viability of the deck. So. Uh, this deck profile here, uh, the side deck is just something we'll talk about later. This is not his actual side deck, but this is Jonathan Gomez's uh, deck profile with SSA cards. He's the same team that I'm on, essentially. Uh, he was the last guy that topped with Necros, essentially. Uh, unless, you know, there's some other big tournament coming up where we'll see more Necros. I know that the ARG format has a different list, so maybe if you're playing in that format, you can kind of use some of the similar ideas that we're going to be talking about today. But uh, not only will we be going over a deck profile, like I said, we'll talk more about, like, other things. So... Uh, I spoke with Jonathan, he says the deck is pretty much done. Um, I feel like the deck, it significantly hurt. I mean, Shrit Band is a pretty big blow. But there's a card that can kind of count as the entire tribute for a, a water monster, but obviously Shrit is just such a better card because, of course, it has Necros in its name. Uh, much better, it, you can sh search it out with Rota. Well, the one Rota that we still have right now in the TCG. But um, keep in mind, guys, you know, the ban list can be changed in the next format if you pick up some of these cards now because uh, they're pretty cheap right now. Uh, and I'm sure they'll get cheaper and cheaper, but, uh, you know, maybe the next ban list will be like, okay, Shrey is now unbanned. Maybe they'll put, like, Brow to 2, Unicorn to 2. You know, we never know what happens on these ban lists that Konami generates. But, anyways, yeah, we'll go ahead and, like, kind of look at the deck and uh, we'll talk a little bit about it. Because, uh, like I said, there's, like, the last the last stand of the Necros over here. But, uh, anyways, so, uh, he was playing 1 Exa, 1 Great Sorcerer, 2 Retaliating C. This is basically, it was used against like Shadals, it can be used against Reasoning, depending on how your judge is going to rule it, because there was a time where judges were like, no, you can't activate this in response to Reasoning, because it's not going to technically special summon the monster, it's an unknown, but to always ask, again, um, with your, uh, who's ever running the tournament, ask them if you're, you can use Retaliating C to Reasoning, it's pretty important. <laughs> Next up, we got 3 copies of the Senju, 3 copies of the Manju, one Shrit, but now you can't use it. Two Maxi, who's playing uh, one Decisive Armor, one Trish, three Valk, two Bryot, three Unicorn, two Colossolus, two Instant Fusion, one Raigeki, three Rhoda, one Prep, two Mirror, two Kaleidoscope, two Cycle, two MSC, and then Bandies. As far as the extra deck, nothing really needs to be changed, uh, except for obviously you have to change the Exiton Knight, unless of course you're playing in a different format, or you know, you're watching this video two months later after it was made. Uh, you know, we never know what's gonna happen with these Konami lists. Maybe they're gonna make a, a new band list, like, immediately. I don't know, they don't have anything set in stone, so. Anyways, Dragon Master Knight, we got the Panzer Dragon, uh, Norden, 2 Arc Light, 1 Karen Gorgon, 2 Castell- wait, was it 2 Castell? Hold, let me- let me double check on this really quick, because he actually sent me the, um, picture over here. Yeah, it was 2 Castell, okay, just wanted to double check on that. And then, uh, 1 Diamond Dire. The exit on the ban, uh, Wanda Gusto Emerald, which is actually really important if you're going to be playing the Gemite build. 
Uh, then we have two dwellers, and then we have cowboy and rhapsody and berserk. So that's it for like the actual deck profile. But let's talk a little bit about what the deck can do uh, now, because you know obviously we'll have to make some changes. Of course, unless you're playing an ARG, then the changes will be different. So um, as far as magic specters go, this card is excellent against magic specters. You literally can summon this card and instantly win the game. If they go like summon magic specter, search a thing, set a bunch of cards, or they go complete pendulum scale, summon a bunch of monsters or as many as they possibly can, and they set as many back rows as they can, and then you just like. Dunk up, no. <laughs> like, they can't do anything. That deck is heavily reliant off of uh, spells and traps, but uh, they can obviously go into the uh, Ignister. Uh, okay. How is it? How did is it? it, it you, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? The, the Synchro uh, card that bounces back card. That that's like their like main boss monster. It's not even part of like the Magic Specter archetype, but obviously in a, in a Pendulum deck, you can make that relatively easy. But um, going into the future, uh, like. Like I said, this card is just excellent. So if like if you want to swap out some cards, you know, Denko, main deck one Denko is real easy to do. Uh, obviously, when you're gonna update it for the uh, new ban list for the November list, uh, make your changes according to you know what you're playing against. Maybe your locals. There's a bunch of people that play like I don't. So uh, Tyler is a deck that can play a bunch of traps. That deck is still gonna be relevant. But uh, yeah, if you're playing against uh, decks that have a lot of traps, uh, Denko's like an excellent, excellent card. A lot of people are also just playing in like one dance princess. At one point, a lot of people were uh, main decking uh, the uh, secret village, so it just helps you have a spell cast, which is kind of nice. Um, there's also people trying out Girski Chain and Girski Vision, and then obviously Upstar can help out with consistency in the deck. And a lot of this deck right now, I feel like it comes down to recycling your cards because you only have one Unicorn, you only have one Bryo. Uh, in this game right now for this deck and being able to reset them with emerald is actually really really important and um, In addition to that brilliant fusion actually makes the deck so much better just because again that additional summon when you can summon Senju You can summon Manju an additional time like you summon one of these and then you summon the other one Not only do you have easy access to a rank 4, but with the addition of Valk you have that extra card the uh, the gem knight card that gives you that additional normal summon in the game uh, I forgot what it's called. I'll, I'll mouse over so you guys can uh, have access to uh, knowing which, what it is. I know it's like a grill and she's like laying down or something like that. Uh, is it this one? Uh, okay, it's not. It's, it's, it is a grill. I guess she's not laying down. Okay, maybe maybe that's different artwork over there. But anyways, uh, Gem Knight Surf... Uh, is that Seraph? Seraph Knight? Seraph... Yeah, Seraph Knight. Uh, anyways, uh, she's pretty good because while this card is based up on the field, once per turn during your main phase, you can normal summon a monster in addition to your normal summon or set. You can only gain this effect once per turn. And uh, in addition to being able to distribute it with Valk, um, I guess technically if you're running Panda Dragon, you know, rank fives, right? But uh, for the most part, uh, you're just going to be using this for the additional normal summon. But What's excellent with this deck, you can actually make use of that because Val can distribute it, and then you could just draw an extra card, and this card is free anyways. And then also, obviously, with the clowns. Is it Trick Clown? Uh, well, anyways, uh, Trick Clown is excellent. I mean, obviously, a lot of people are playing the Clown Engine in almost everything, but with the addition of Trick Clown, what's really awesome with this is you're able to attribute uh, it with Valk, or you can send it to the graveyard with the effect of the Brilliant Fusion, and you can actually put him in the graveyard and then proc his effect through that, and then you can just reset your card to Daigusto Emerald. Like, pretty much the, how the deck runs now is resetting cards with Daigusto Emerald, but um, that's what a lot of people have been doing. I don't know if you guys have seen any other ways to play the deck. Uh, I was thinking about trying to make a like Gishki version of uh, like a Gishki Necros deck. There is a little bit of RNG with Gishki Chain. If you guys haven't seen this card, the OCG was actually using this card for a while, uh, simply because uh, they actually had Manju or Senju was hit, I believe, in the OCG. So they were actually running Gishki Chain at one point, and the deck was still doing relatively well with Gishki Chain. Uh, when this card is normal summon, you get to look at the top three cards of your deck, and if there's a ritual monster or monsters or spells, you can reveal one of them. Uh, to your opponent, and then you get to add it to your hand, then return the other cards to your deck in the order of your choice. So that's kind of nice. Uh, it definitely helps out, especially because if you're running the uh, Gem Knight build and you have the Brilliant Fusion, again, that normal summon is going to allow you to actually get, you know, potential free advantage. Now, this one is not as good as this because this searches out, you know, per well, this one's going to search you up pretty much everything that you need in the deck. And then with Senju over here, you have access to uh, any of the ritual monsters, which of course can, can search you out the traps, anyway, or the uh, spells, anyways. I don't know, maybe one day we'll get some traps for Necros. 
But uh, I also wanted to mention really quickly that this card is really good um, in addition to having that effect of sending the monsters to the graveyard and also getting you that additional normal summon with the uh, gem right that you bring out. But it has that effect that once per turn you can discard one spell card, the monster special summoned by this card's effect gains attack and defense equal to the original attack and defense. Because when you summon that monster, the uh, uh, the Seraph Knight over here, um, or was it Ser Seraph? Seraph Mean? I don't know, whatever, the Gem Knight. Okay, so you bring out the, the Gem Knight, and it's going to have zero attack, but you can increase it back to 2300. Uh, if you happen to uh, discard a spell card. So like there's enough spell cards I feel like in this deck Maybe you draw double instant fusion obviously we're gonna have to cut down on the rotas But you can make good use of this card So I feel like necros are in a spot right now um, Like I said I spoke with Jonathan which is uh, the guy that uh, was the last guy basically at top with necros at like a, a big Konami event And if you guys have any questions, uh, you know, I'm on the same team as him essentially so I can message him and hit him up and if you guys want to know anything more about the deck, but he says the deck is pretty much done and I would agree with him to an extent. I would say the deck is pretty much done when we have the Magician Pendulums. As of right now, I think you can still get around maybe if you got Brilliant Fusion and again, if you pick up these cards relatively cheap now, maybe in the future when they, you know, decide that, uh, you know, this deck isn't going to be so strong against Pendulums. Maybe they'll be like, okay, Shrip back to two, maybe we'll get Unicorn back to two, Bryanac back to two, maybe something else to help the deck out to maybe be a little bit more viable, and who knows. There's a lot more ritual stuff coming out in the game, so maybe some new ritual stuff will make this deck actually better. I know there's just this card, um, this card was amazing, uh, uh, Urgent Ritual Art, so if you control no ritual monsters, you banish a ritual spell card from your hand or graveyard, this card's effect becomes that card's uh, rit uh, effect, that ritual summons a monster when... The this uh the card is activated it was really cool when we still had shrit uh to be able to trish on your opponent's turn that was oh my gosh that's so freaking awesome but uh yeah depending on what new ritual support we get this deck could be more viable but uh like i said it's pretty cheap now so pick it up see what you guys uh think or let me know what you guys think about it or if you have any other like secret text that uh not that many people know about that can make this deck more viable i'd love to hear them in the comment section below but thanks for watching guys i'm signing out